Most people in ancient Israel lived in small villages throughout the land, since this was a largely agricultural society, and the, that's where the fields were. Most crafts for daily use probably would have been made in the household. In larger settlements or cities, crafts could be more specialized. Often a given craft was located within a particular area of a city, and all of those involved in the craft would live and work in that same area. For example, Jeremiah refers to the Baker Street in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 37, 21. Those participating in a particular craft would be part of a generational household that specialized in that craft. In other words, they were hereditary. Many crafts would be practiced at home, usually out of doors. Full-time artisans might work in a workshop. Making pottery, for example, required a lot of space, so it was often done in workshops. Crafts like tanning would cause a lot of unpleasant smells, and so they would be located at the edge of town. There is archaeological evidence to indicate that the temple precincts and the royal palace were sites of various kinds of craft workshops. Now, pottery was an indispensable craft, as the potter's workshop produced vessels used in everyday and ceremonial life, as well as bricks, tiles, spindle whorls, figurines, and loom weights. A potter's workspace would have included a pottery wheel, space for treading, a kiln, a field for storing fuel and vessels, a dump for the rejects, and a water source. Often caves would be used as workshops because of their cooler temperatures, which allowed for slower drying. Tanning is the process for treating animal skins with tannins to prepare leather. Leather was used, for example, as the outermost curtain for the tabernacle. Leather would have been used for shoes and for some kinds of apparel. Liquid containers consisted of leather. Helmets, parts of shields, and other weapons used leather. It is interesting to note that um, a lot of dolphin leather was actually used in the ancient world. There were many t crafts associated with the making and decorating of textiles, spinning, weaving, embroidery, fulling, which means the shrinking, cleaning, and thickening of new cloth to make it attractive, and dyeing. By the way, this uh, craft of fulling um, was done by what was called a fuller. And so the last name fuller for Fuller Ser Se uh, Seminary actually is a name that originates in a particular craft. Uh, obviously in English. Most textiles for the common people would have been made of wool, whereas those who were more wealthy could afford clothing of linen. Linen was used by the Israelite priests. There is some mention of the use of cotton. Women especially were involved in spinning and weaving. See, for example, Proverbs 31, 13, 19, 22, and 24. And remember, this was actually a very important um, economic involvement. Copper, gold, silver, and iron were used in the production of ornaments, jewelry, tools, vessels, and weapons. Job 28 describes much of the work connected with metallurgy and precious stones. Copper was the first to be used in the 4th millennium BCE. Uh, they call this, of course, the Bronze Age. At that time, copper was mixed with arsenic at first and later with tin to make it stronger, and that is uh, what they call bronze. 
Working with iron became more common in the first millennium, called the Iron Age, especially in the production of weapons. Many of the temple vessels were made of silver and gold. See, for example, Kings 6 through 7 and Jeremiah 52, 19. The wealthy used gold and silver for jewelry and other adornment. For example, two small silver amulets with part of the priestly blessing were found in a tomb at Ketephenom outside the walls of Jerusalem. In many ways, governance in ancient societies was much less formal than it is in our own world, although this may have differed from place to place. In village life, elders, probably the heads of households, were in charge of maintaining law and order and delivering justice. Unlike today, there was no standing uh, police force of any kind. Judges included people appointed by the king. It included Levites and elders to settle disputes, keep order, and protect the widow, orphan, and stranger. In the era before the kings, leadership would have been provided by the heads of clans and tribes, with the occasional leader rising up in a time of crisis. During the monarchy, kings were meant to maintain the socio-political order to guarantee well-being and security. Uh, you might take a look, for example, at Psalm 72. While there was some form of standing army, most combatants in warfare in ancient Israel would have been able-bodied men coming in from their regular jobs to participate in battle. Separation of church and state was a concept unthinkable throughout the ancient world really up until, you know, 16th, 17th centuries of our own era. This does not mean that the governments were theocracies, but rather there were various kinds of leadership, including the priestly, that worked in cooperation, each having its own sphere of influence. At times, as with somebody like Samuel, the offices of judge, priest, and prophet would have been combined. Priests and Levites oversaw the functions of the temple and other shrines in the early days of Israel, including sacrifice, prayer, music, and judicial office. Prophets played the role of intermediary between God and the people by speaking God's word to the people. Very often in Israel, they are seen as interacting with kings and other leaders. It is in this sphere of leadership that you find most writing occurring. Writing, in particular, would have been used in the environs of, of temple, palace, and in cities, in the places of the marketplace. The alphabet that was used for ancient Hebrew was invented around 2000 BCE, probably by Semitic speakers working among Egyptians. Around the early first millennium BCE, the Phoenicians began using a 22-letter alphabet, which was adopted by Aramaic and Hebrew speakers around the same time. Early examples are extant from the 10th century BCE. Literacy was probably not widespread. Really, you, you don't have widespread literacy until after the invention of the printing press, partly because um, not that many texts would have been available and they would have been rather expensive. Most of what remains from writing in the ancient world, at least in ancient Israel, relates to administration and economics. There are also monumental inscriptions, which are inscribed stones um, that would have been talking about the exploits of various kings. Examples of letters and receipts have been found written with ink on clay sherds, ostraca. It may have been 
that the rejects from you know the potter's workshop would have been uh, utilized in order to um, make quick records uh, in various transactions. Leather or parchment would have been used for high-level documents written with carbon-based ink. Documents such as contracts or letters would have been rolled and secured with string and small clay seal impressions used to seal the documents. People of prominence would have had their own stamp seals for use in such documents. Here's an example of the remains of a monumental inscription from Amman, and it is writing on inscribed stone. The particular alphabet that is used here is the old um, Semitic alphabet that was used throughout the world until the basically the Persian Empire when gradually um, a newer form of uh, the Aramaic alphabet sort of took precedence and was adopted by Jews. Here are some examples of clay sherds from ancient Samaria, 8th century BCE. And these are all economic documents. They record certain um, amounts of goods that are like wine, um, oil, flour, that are being transferred to various people. Here is an example of a stamp seal. And this one has a, a ring which would have been worn around a cord with a cord or chain in order to keep it in place. And it usually held the name of the owner and was used to seal economic and legal transactions. This one means belonging to Palti. Here is a longer document. Um, this is in a form of um, Greek that was used as to record a particular sale. And it records the sale of acacia trees. And we can see here on the right a palette and brushes that would have been used in the writing of ink documents. And this particular one is written on papyrus. Papyrus was used uh, extensively, almost exclusively, in Egypt, and that is where it was produced. It was often exported to other parts of the world, but it was expensive and so would have only been used for important documents.